Good morning. Hello. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I hope this finds each of you healthy and well today. And I am coming to you all on YouTube off my uh, uh, iPhone again. So still figuring out the desktop update. But at any rate, today we're going to talk about some really, really exciting research. I have some news and updates, research about specifically an amazing combination, a natural combo. This is the latest research that is showing the two together are reducing um, in mild and even severe cases, the length of time that COVID is uh, highly overwhelming to the body, which is good news to share that information. Also, we have some new information out of the heart um, American Heart Association and the connection with AFib and COVID. So if you or any of your loved ones have weakened immune systems or might be dealing with coronavirus um, or are uh, dealing with any type of heart issues like AFib, this particular show will be helpful, um, I think, for you all to gain some additional information to help them. So I'd love to know for all of you joining me on the live, comment down below, let me know where you're tuning in from. Uh, Daisy's uh, doing her roll call. She's down here. You can't really see her. But um, so before we dig into the uh, surge news uh, update of today, um, I do want to share some information. One, if you haven't done so, please download my free pandemic wellness guide. This is multiple pages of resources that I think would you would find helpful for you and your family as we're going into the worst time of the virus. Um, and that is a fact. I mean, this is, not, this is not a controversial topic. This is science and data. We are exponentially growing and significantly moving forward in the degree of community spread. All 50 states now have community spread. The other thing I want to highlight is tomorrow, I'm very excited, I'm going to be live on Sovereign Laboratories' Facebook page. They have asked me to be a part of their uh, monthly Q and A, and we're uh, answering discuss questions about stress management, mental health uh, topics for tomorrow. So that will be at I think it's eleven thirty Mountain Time. It's one thirty Eastern Time. There's a link down below Instagram. You'll have that up above um, when this wraps. And I hope you'll join us. We are going to take live questions. We've been asking for questions, so we. I actually had a meeting yesterday and there's some really thoughtful questions about gut related imbalances and mental health and all different types of questions that I think are going to be relative to how many of you feel now. So we'll be uh, on there for about 45 minutes to an hour tomorrow. And then the other thing that's really exciting, this was just one of these things like, you know, you talk about something and then boom, you get an email like, wow. I'm really excited to share that my friends at Octagon Bio Labs, they have a sale, a mega sale. And so you guys know I'm promoting my H or uh, C Bumblebee D, my really amazing botanical herbal. This is the bomb. Oh gosh, guys, I love this. This is a very soothing, calming bomb. It's a lot different than my menthol enhanced uh, pain relief ointment that I have that we sell in our clinic. This has uh, eucalyptus and lavender. And this is their sale. This is better than any of the coupons I could ever give you. Um, you buy one, you get 30% off, automatic. No coupons needed, just hit the link down below. Um, buy one, you get 30% off. Buy two, you get 40% off both items. And if you buy three, you get 50% off all three items. That, seriously, if you buy some of the higher uh, milligram doses, you're gonna be saving yourself several hundred dollars. I mean, it is a great deal. And so if you are a consumer of Octagon Biolabs, they are one of the higher quality um, C Bumblebee D manufacturers. It's high quality, it's Q QC, it's quality control tested. And just the way they extract it, it's very clean. Even the ingredients, um, it, it, it there are no fillers. A lot of the stuff that's on the market is just junk. And so they are they're what I recommend. I love, love, love them. They have soft caps now, soft gels, so you can swallow them. They have the liquid and then they have the balm. And the balm, the balm is my favorite. I love to put the balm on my neck, on my chest, on my feet. I put it on Gabriel's back. You can put it on, uh, like he's having growing pains. We put it on his legs. It's awesome stuff. 
So that is something you want to take advantage of. That is uh, through the end of the month, uh, but as supplies last. And I, I don't doubt that they will probably go, um, they'll, they'll max out in terms of the sale. It's so good. Okay, so let's dig into to what's going on. We are seeing exponential growth here across all 50 states now. Georgia has joined the club. That's where I live. And unfortunately, we... Uh, and I'll share with you what's going on in Georgia. We are, we're not seeing any type of movement from our state to protect uh, the collective body. And so uh, I'm gonna share with you kind of state by state what's all going on. So it's relative to, relative to each of you, just some of the states that have had new kind of issuances of guidance and new, um, you know, tightening of restrictions. But this is where we stand worldwide. We're at 55 million total cases of, co of coronavirus. These are, some have recovered, some are in active state. The majority of the world we're gonna see have re, having recovered. The US here, we have quite a, quite a bit of active cases, um, but we have right now in the US 11.439 million cases. It is Wednesday, and what we're projecting is by Friday, end of day Friday, maybe Saturday morning, we will hit we'll put an up another million and so we're inching there we're halfway there it's wednesday so we hit a million we hit 11 million on sunday we're at almost 11 and a half million by wednesday so we're going to see where it took us to hit a million in seven days this will probably take five to six days for us to hit so the exponential growth is is accelerating um, we had 159,508 new cases yesterday and a total of 1,066 uh, fatalities. Um, what we are seeing is just massive, massive spread in uh, particularly a lot of rural communities. Rural hospitals are getting maxed out. We are seeing um, a change in some of the local guidance, some of the state guidance. Um, unfortunately, what we are not seeing is any type of federal engagement, any type of involvement of the task force. Um, and we're kind of in this holding pattern as this crisis just, it's like a wildfire. Um, and that is not speculation, that is fact. We have not had our president uh, be a part of the COVID task force meetings in over five months. Uh, and it really is lacking quite a bit of leadership and direction. Um, let me tell you about what's going on uh, just all over the U.S. Um, we are seeing in Alaska, they are now going to be implementing travel restrictions. Um, they are looking at requiring testing for folks coming into Alaska. And that is, uh, this is a really big thing. Alaska is moving into the winter months. There are a lot of trucking companies that transport up there. Um, and even contractors within the oil industry and fishing. And so uh, they're looking at testing all those individuals who are going up there recreationally or for professional purposes. We are seeing in California, LA County is tightening on Friday. They've announced that Friday, they're going to be scaling back um, attendance in non-essential businesses. They're gonna drop down to 25% occupancy. Um, indoors occupancy is going to be 25%. Um, they are establishing uh, restrictions with in restaurants. So restaurants now are going to go down to 50% capacity. They're also going to see that in outdoor dining, personal care appointments, and even gym appointments are, are gym, you know, personal care, gym care. Um, we are going to be uh, doing, they're going to be requiring appointment only. So if you get your hair done, dental appointment, medical appointment, it has to be appointment only, no walk-ins. Um, and they are also limiting the max quantity of people gathered. They've dropped it down to 15 people and a max of three households. So you're gonna start to hear me talk about number of people and number of households. That is how states and local municipalities are starting to address Thanksgiving. And so they're really trying to limit massive gatherings of multi families. You know, traditional Thanksgiving might have four to six households. And so they're really looking at limiting that. Um, in Delaware, they are um, limiting indoor gatherings up to 10 people. Restaurant capacity is going to drop 
to 30% capacity indoors. That will take effect on the 23rd, which is on Monday um, before Thanksgiving. And they are also suspending in-person visits to the prisons in Delaware. Florida has no changes. And in fact, Florida's, Florida is, um, they're dealing with a massive shakeup in the Department of Health and in the um, coronavirus uh, professionals there for the state. I haven't gotten into the details of it, but I know we have some resignations and it might be in place because uh, the Florida Governor DeSantos, having lived there, he is making no sort of measures to protect people. Uh, so Florida is also approaching where we have uh, seasonal uh, people who, you know, we have our snowbirds that come down. We have seasonal people coming down for holidays and winter, you know, spring training is a big point that people come down to Florida. So they're, they're not limiting anything. Georgia, again, we've had no changes here either. In Hawaii, now there is a cross island mask mandate. And there is a new order that if you are a business and an individual comes in refusing to wear a mask, that the business can refuse services. If you come in for coffee, you're not wearing a mask, they can say no coffee for you, no soup for you, you can't uh, get your hair cut here. So they are allowing businesses to regulate the participants who come into their uh, facility. That includes uh, grocery stores and things like that. We've all seen, you know, the Karens that have gone crazy on, um, you know, on video virtual where they aren't wearing masks, throwing a temper tantrum in the grocery store. It's, it's really embarrassing that we're, we're at that stage. The other thing in Hawaii, they have um, mandated all hotels adopt a COVID health and safety plan to ensure that folks that are there vacationing again, uh, that they are safe. In Idaho, Idaho is limiting gatherings to 50 ind individuals indoors or outdoors. They're limiting uh, capacity of restaurants um, to 25%. And uh, Idaho doesn't have a mask mandate. The only thing that they've required is that masks are worn at long-term care facilities. So, you know, we do know that research shows wearing masks is very helpful. And the fact that they are not employing that is just indicative that they're disconnected from the science and the facts around overall protection. But, you know, that is what it is. Uh, Illinois on November 20th, which is uh, tomorrow, gosh, no, Friday, that's in two days. I can't believe it's November already. Um, on Friday, Illinois is uh, employing restrictions that will hit retail, gyms, hotels, bars, restaurants, and even manufacturing. Um, gyms, you have to have, all, you know, gyms are requiring masks and appointment only. Uh, uh, same with um, masks in retail and personal care. Um, they are now limiting that down to 25% uh, attendance. So for example, if you are out uh, over the, you know, Friday or the weekend and you've got to get your Thanksgiving groceries and you go to Trader Joe's or Whole Foods or any of your supermarkets, there might be a line because they're now limiting 25% attendance. And so where maybe they had gone up to having 40 to 60 people in, maybe they'll only be allowing 20. Um, so just be aware that your shopping might be impacted as you're getting materials for a potential, potential impending quarantine or lockdown restrictions with your schools. Uh, just know that shopping might be a little bit more cumbersome and you might have to wait in line. So plan accordingly. And if you're going to do it, you know, do your shopping online and, you know, limit your exposure. Uh, Illinois is closing casinos, museums, and theaters. Um, and they've put a pause on indoor recreational events. Um, outdoor gatherings, it's 10 or less, and they require face masks at all time. Indiana is limiting social gatherings. Um, they haven't been overly specific there, but I will say that is the only state thus far that actually has money that they've allocated to local officials. They've um, granted $20 million to actually help uh, local businesses adhere to some of the different guidelines. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know if that's relief money, if it's left over from the CARES Act or, or what the plan is there, but they've got, they've got money and they've got a plan in place. In Iowa, this is really, I wanna make a note on this. Iowa, Iowa has uh, employed 
a funky mask order. They have, uh, where they have their mask order, it's children two and older have to wear a mask. Um, and the requirement is you have to wear a mask if you're going to be six feet or less uh, in distance from somebody for more than 15 minutes and they're not your family. So you have to plan accordingly or at least have a mask on, uh, you know, hand if that will happen. But they are not employing a mask mandate in all the areas where we know there's a big spread. Uh, schools, bars, churches, and restaurants. So Iowa has, you know, they're, they're making a statement, but it's not globally to shut down um, the spread of these viral particulates. We do know masks are highly effective at protecting not only each other, but ourselves. Um, okay, so Kansas, they are employing localized requirements and mandates. Nothing over the top, but the one thing that I do wanna make a note, Topeka School District um, has gone to remote learning through December. Um, Kentucky, they have announced that there will be new measures coming. We don't know what that looks like. We don't know when. Louisiana has not changed. Maine now has a face mask mandate. Uh, Maryland has announced they've got, uh, they're losing the war uh, against COVID. It's, it's a war and, and the virus is the winner. That was a quote from the governor. Um, on the 20th, so on Friday, businesses, religious uh, organizations, and uh, different um, venues are going to be lowering the capacity by 50%. So that is one thing that we're seeing there change. Um, in Massachusetts, uh, you know, they've started already employing, I mentioned, I still have a 617 cell phone number. And uh, a week and a half ago, I got a call from somebody, uh, you know, it's like a robo call. And then I got a text about, you know, links to the new changes. But now they are building a field hospital in Worcester. So this is on a highway, I think it's highway 90 out there. Um, they, it's, it's a town that's maybe 50 minutes from Boston, um, but they are utilizing this, they're gonna be building this field hospital and it's going to be overflow for both Boston and uh, some of the suburbs. So that is an anticipation of growing numbers. Um, in Michigan, they've got now those orders. Um, I, I do wanna mention that like group gym classes are included in that cancellation. And this is specific. Um, in Michigan, they're limiting the gathering of only two households max. So two families gathering for Thanksgiving in Michigan. A few other states that are noteworthy, um, Montana, they are employing a curfew in the evenings, 10 p.m. curfew and limiting capacity at restaurants and, and uh, retail by 50%. That's pretty significant for Montana. I love Montana. I love big sky country. It's so beautiful out there. Um, okay, Nebraska. Uh, Nebraska has, if we hit, they, this is their kind of mode, if we hit hospitalizations that are capped out, they have a certain threshold. If they hit and exceed that threshold, which right now it looks like five to six days, they will hit that threshold. They then will employ, employ lockdowns or impo impose lockdowns. What's crazy is they're already showing that they're charting there. I don't understand why they don't do that five to six days ahead of time. But also a lot of these measures, we have to give people time to organize and, and get themselves all kind of ready. So that might be part of it. Um, but that those are, those are some major movements uh, that we're seeing just overall. Um, the other thing that we are seeing, um, and I, I do wanna highlight, this is really interesting. We have an MMWR, this is, uh, this came out yesterday evening out of the CDC. This is a little bit about um, the idea of surveillance pooling um, that I had mentioned. Like instead of just testing one student, they would, they would, you know, test all of them, but run one. So let's say it's a dorm that gets tested. They test the dorm collectively. And then if there's a positive, then they do individual testing. It was a way to kind of minimize the amount of testing uh, supplies they needed. So you could test 100 people on one kind of run through. And um, they talk a little bit about Duke University in Durham, North, North Carolina. It's a study that looked at August 2nd through October 11th. And uh, they talk a little bit about how um, 
it 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 does it did help to lower transmission on campus and it helped them to do some risk reduction practices um, they talk a little bit about the clinical um you know the the lab methods that they did um and the quantity of t individuals tested it was about sixty thousand um, students and i believe that there might have been it was students only um and what they they found is that they could, by pooling, they had 29 cases that were find, found by pooling tested. Um, 23 cases were found by contact tracing off of that. And then they found 15 that were um, positive from symptom monitoring. And they said in total, there were 84 total students that had positive tests um, that did not report symptoms. So they found these positive cases by the pooling testing method where they might not have been able to actually identify them. So that was kind of an interesting um, surveillance. They talk a little bit about just the, the growth in that area of positive tests. They then talk a little bit about um, the, the, the pooled candidates, you know, like where, uh, where, they, where they were located. Um, so essentially, you know, this says um, that prevention strategy um, also included risk uh, reduction behaviors. They did frequent pool testing um, and that half of one half of the infections that they found were asymptomatic. And some of these individuals had high viral load. What we do know is that some individuals who have high viral load, they're the super spreaders, the, the super loaders. So um, this is really kind of interesting in terms of maybe this is an approach, you know, come 2021. So I wanted to highlight that. The other thing, you know, as we're kind of digging into Thanksgiving gatherings, this is a report out of Israel, um, Tel Aviv University uh, Asian study. And it looks at the COVID, they actually isolated five mass gatherings. They said they were outdoor rallies in the United States in August. And this is really interesting. And, you know, and this is something we have to kind of, this is predictive for Thanksgiving gatherings. What they looked at is that for these individuals who attended the gatherings, the mortality, the, the fatalities, so people who, who attended, the deaths started at 19 to 24 days. Um, and they talked about in the 50 mile radius of the gathering, there was a 2.1 fold increase in the mortality. So in 50 miles, that's kind of the major spread zone. And then they look at 51 to 100 mile radius, it drops to a 1.4 uh, uh, fold increase. Um, and they talked about the uh, gatherings, um, one of the challenges here is that, you know, they, um, there, there's not a whole lot of testing, if you will, with some of these, but I'll tell you the, the, the it seems they are political gatherings. It doesn't specifically identify, but it says, um, these are in August, 2020, there are outdoor rallies in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Arizona, Pennsylvania, and New Hampshire. And then they looked at the, the mortality. And what I want to do is, I want to show, this is the marker where they've got, I don't know if everybody can see this. So this, this is the time zone. So this is the 20 day. It's the estimated start of the gathering effect. And then you start to see the increase here. Um, and so these are So their analysis basically showed an increase in mortality following mass gatherings 
um, and that that zero to 50 mile radius is where they saw a 2.1 fold increase, 51 to 100, 1.4, and even 100 miles out, it's 1.2. Um, so perhaps people drove in to the rally. I'm not quite clear on all of those specifics, and they didn't get into all of that. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that. Now, the other thing I do want to highlight is um, we also have some additional data. This is out of... Um, Massachusetts, so Department of Biomedical Informatics at Boston Harvard, or Harvard Medical School in Boston, um, the Ben Guron University in Israel as well. Um, what they look at is school reopening in Florida. So this is an examination of Florida. Guarantee none of my Florida friends have heard or seen this report. This just came out. Um, but what they identify is that they found counties that were teaching physically had a 1.2 fold incidence increase in elementary school. So if you, you are in person in elementary school, there's 1.2 fold increase in, in COVID cases, 1.3 fold increase in high school, um, while the counties that taught remotely had zero, they had no increases. So it suggests that counties teaching physically could consider teaching remotely, especially in high school. So they highlighted high school being the major point. Um, and this would has a little bit, let me see, I believe. There was a chart here. Yeah, here we go. Um, this breaks down by the ages. And so the green is 6 to 13 remote. So the greens are all the kids like Gabriel who are at home. You know, the instances of, of COVID exposure. Uh, so 13, so the younger on the low end, 6 to 13 remote. And then 14 to 17 remote really low. Now then we go to kids who are in school. This red line is 6 to 13, but the major point are the older kids, loss of community spread because of just those statistics. The other thing that came out, um, and I wasn't able to print this specific study, but there's a study that reviewed the prevalence and outcomes of hospitalized COVID-19 or atrial flutter. What they found, and this was reviewed by Yale. So Yale has a cardiovascular COVID registry, June or July. Um, but this registry, they've, uh, they identified folks who were hospitalized between March and June of 2020. Um, and the evidence shows that um, the, the specific patients, was 435 patients, 7.8% of these patients were diagnosed with AFib or flutter for the first time in their lives after or you know, during or after their COVID situation. 15.9% um, of these patients had a prior, percent had a history of arrhythmia, um, but essentially one fifth of the patients had some sort of episode of atrial uh, fibrillation or uh, flutter. And what they show is that folks that have a history of AFib have a significantly higher risk of death or ICU mor mortality. Um, and it's partly due to that condition already existed, some of the potential damage there, but then it's, it's also related to the damage of the lungs, the kidneys, and then also additional heart damage. Uh, but they, they linked it to the multi-organ failure, the renal failure, respiratory failure. Um, and so what they said, this is a direct quote of the lead author of the study. Our study suggests that the combination of COVID-19 and atrial arrhythmias may create a pathologic synergy that markedly increases the risk for major adverse cardio cardiac events and death. Um, and COVID-19 places patients at a high risk for abnormal heart rhythms 
that are in turn associated with markedly worse outcomes, including death and multi-organ failure. And they talk about how patients and physicians need to monitor these arrhythmias closely and treatments to be uh, timely. I think this is really interesting. And, and you know, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek. We're working on my holiday gift guide. I have linked down below um, the Cardia, Cardio Mobile. This is where you can monitor very easily uh, your rhythms, your heart rhythms. And if you've got a family member or you yourself, regardless of age, um, has any history of heart arrhythmias, this is really something that we need to monitor. This goes beyond just going into your cardio, you know, your cardiac care uh, center or meeting your cardiologist or any of the interventional, uh, met, you know, um, uh, modalities for cardiac care and AFib. We need to be actively monitoring this on a daily basis, just like you would monitor your blood pressure. So I think this is really something where we see that, you know, that specific percentage is 7.8%. Um, um, we're never, they never had that before. And, you know, look at, we've got 11.4 million cases. You know, we take 7.8% of that. That's a lot of people that are now going to be needing to monitor their their heart rates. Um, so I wanted to highlight that. I thought that was really interesting. That, um, that might also um, highlight more information. Uh, we might see more details come from that, um, but uh, I, find, I find that interesting. The last piece is really something I wanna to talk to you today about is this combination that was studied. Um, and this particular topic is one of these weird ones on YouTube, so I wanna be very cognizant of that. Um, but this study is uh, came out of um, a multitude of uh, medical groups in Pakistan and Chile, and I think that we have New York. So there was a Department of Pediatrics that was a part of this. Um, pediatric Oncology as well in Pakistan. Um, and then also we see uh, Harvard, their uh, Department of Medicine at Mass General. That's one of the, it's a premier uh, facility. Um, and a lot of the Harvard Med teachers teach there. And I think there was one other place, Montreal. So the Center Hosp Hospitalier Universitaire, so the University of Montreal was also part of it. So there's a total of 36. It's a big, big collection of folks. And this is really important, especially when we see Mass General get on board, friends. This is, you know, premier leading facility. And I, I'm very fascinated by this because anytime I find research, um, that comes out that's more natural in its focus, orientation of natural medicine or um, natural occurring foods, oils, and uh, compounds that we can consume often in some dietary, dietary fashion, I get excited about because that rarely gets released or even assessed by this kind of caliber of medical uh, research. So with that being said, this is what they looked at. They looked at two compounds, honey, naturally occurring from bees. I love honey, I recommend it all the time. We consume it basically every day. Um, and then they look at um, something called HNS, um, which is Nigella sativa. And I'm going to use its specific name because I think that might kind of help me here in the YouTube sphere. But this is um, a particular colored oil and the colored oil is black, okay? So it's a black, um, color. It comes from uh, a seed and it's the oil of that. Okay. So read, read between those lines what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but honey and this uh, seed oil, this colored seed oil, um, they use this in combination. And both of these collectively have antimicrobial, antiviral properties. And that is what they honed in on. They honed in on antimicrobial properties and they wanted to look at it with patients in a multi-center randomized controlled trial. This is awesome, friends. I, you know, I can't really, I can't underscore this enough. The fact that we've got something like this that has been run. They do have a placebo 
and they've got your, you know, so it's randomized. Some get it, some don't, and then they look at it. But basically, this the dose is one gram of honey a day, and one gram of is eighty milligrams. So one gram, of, one gram of honey, and eighty grams of the colored seed oil, and that color is black. Okay, um, and they do this for thirteen days, and they wanted to uh, evaluate: do the symptoms get alleviated? What is the viral clearance? Like, do they get rid of, you know, do they, are they able to get rid of that viral load they're carrying? Are they able to shed it and get rid of it? And then they also look at the 30 day mortality. So total of 313 patients are a part of it. Um, 210 are moderate and 103 are severe. Okay, so they go into the ICUs and they go into folks that maybe have downgraded from ICU or just really severe on oxygen. And um, 107 get ad administered the honey and the colored seed oil, and 103 do not, okay? Um, and that is in the moderate cases. In the severe, 50 are given this combo, and 53 are given a, a placebo. And what they found is that the combination of the honey and the colored seed oil, it alleviates symptoms by three and seven days in moderate and severe disease. This is really big. Um, they also show that folks who are on the combo of honey and this colored seed oil, this Nigella sativa, they clear the virus four days earlier in a moderate case. And actually both cases, four days, four days they clear it in moderate and severe. Um, and what they found is that this combination led to a better better clinical score on day six. Um, and that means like in these patients, they might wheel in the little, um, you know, bike to get them to kind of moving. So there are all these kind of measurements of getting them either downgraded in the hospital category at ICU or, you know, it's a step down type of process. Um, they found that they, they had better clinical scores. And when it came to reducing the mortality, um, it was 4% versus 18% without. So it reduced mortality significantly. Um, and there are no adverse effects. So what they say is, this is what it says. Now, how well this gets adapted, we don't know. But we also know this is where this could be a really good thing. We see where there's no cure for this virus. And that I have to have as a disclaimer. This is a clinical trial. They're trying to utilize uh, already naturally occurring antiviral uh, compounds that we can eat and consume very easily. It doesn't have to be manufactured. It's not a vaccine or anything like that, or any you know monoclonal monoclonal antibody therapy, anything like that. And what they find is that uh, they they say it's an affordable. It represents an affordable therapy. You can buy these very easily online. You know we sell. Uh, the, the oil in my uh, full script store um, and honey, you can get at your local honey grower. You can get it, you know, at your grocery store, wherever. Um, but they say, you know, the quote is thus this combination, the honey and then a nativa, um, <clears throat> the Nigella sativa, um, HNS represents an affordable therapy and can be used alone or in combination with other treatments to achieve potentiating effects. That means positive effects against COVID-19. This is big. This is really big. I was very excited. Came out yesterday. I was like, woo, I did my little happy dance because we've got several of these kind of things in the mix. But essentially, um, let me tell you a little bit about some of these compounds. Um, we know that honey is antiviral, antimicrobial, antifungal. It is a, a powerhouse um, of positive um, it effects on the body. And they actually list that, you know, um, both, both of these compounds achieve antiviral, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, as well as immune modulating effects on the body. And that has been proven. Um, honey particularly has been used um, in viral categories and has been studied in rubella virus, herpes simplex, uh, hepatitis and uh, varicella zoster, um, and that has been studied also. Um, they talk a little bit about honey has six particular flavonoids that could be impactful to inhibit uh, the SARS-CoV-2 replication. 
Um, I have a feeling we'll probably see more research from this where they dig into honey and um, COVID. Um, but they talk about it, the honey, the comp, these six flavonoids, they might bind to this viral, it's three uh, chymotrypsin like cysteine protease. So it's a particular protein, it can bind to that. Um, they also have shown that, you know, honey is good for MRSA and other resistant drug, um, uh, drug resistant bacteria. They talk about how it can boost the uh, immune system. It has, it helps support the adaptive immune system and can be good for upper respiratory infections. Now, Nigella sativa, so this colored oil, and the color is black, okay? So it's a seed oil, so colored seed oil. That is black. Sometimes it's known as black cumin. Um, this has antiviral effects as well. Um, they have utilized, uh, there are other studies they reference where this seed oil, colored seed oil has uh, been used on mouse cytomegalovirus and HCV. And they also have, they highlight another study and I have to apologize, I, didn't, I haven't seen that study. Um, it is shown to decrease the replication of SARS-CoV-2 in vitro in cell culture. So uh, in vitro is very different than in you know human form, but in kind of a, a laboratory setting, there's a reduction in the replication. And uh, they talk a little bit about some of the compounds. I do wanna share one compound that I really think is a really critical compound. Um, it has a compound called thymoquinone. And if that sounds familiar, um, it's, it's very similar to like how the, that compound is very similar to how the PQQ and CoQ10 uh, work, but the thymoquinone specifically, the thymo, that's their thymus gland, it has an immune uh, a response. It triggers uh, specifically a, an anti-inflammatory immune regulatory response. And this might be where some of these other um, factors are highly beneficial. Um, it got a, in this study that they referenced, it actually got a better energy complex score. It's just some way of measuring like the effectiveness, but it, they, they, it ranked higher than chloroquinone, hydro, hydroxychloroquinone and favoprivivir drugs, like synthesized pharmaceuticals um, against SARS-CoV-2 effects. So much more effective, much more uh, reduction in, you know, much greater reduction in the viral uh, replication process. So this is really, really positive in terms of seeing the, um, the effects. And what they said is that these two together showcase pharmacological profiles. They have similar pharmacological profiles as some of these other medications but uh, they might be effective in combination with some of the other effects. So I want, do wanna highlight, gets into a whole bunch of like the way they monitored it, I, whatnot, but I believe that there was, I've got, let me see, I wanna show. So this is the interesting, they always give you a study flow chart. This is the flow chart. So it literally starts with the patient, you know, quantity of patients, uh, the different type of testing that they did, and then they get into uh, their three teams, B, well, four in total, but really B, C, and D. They talk about getting the H and S uh, dosing. That's the combination. They reference the honey and a gel S and TV, H and S. Um, and the quantity of patient, patients on the moderate side and the severe side. And here, let me see. I, I moved one of the, here we go. Okay, so this is what they look at, the effectiveness. And they talk about, they have a control group, and then, um, let me, I'll, I'll, let me just, it, it's, it is highly confusing if I, if I show you this without explaining it. So they give, um, a up here are the moderate cases. These are the severe cases. This red color is the mortality. So these are the fatalities, the deaths. Um, they look at the individuals who are um, in the control category 
with um, the honey Nutella sativa, what they look at is um, the green is the positive effect of being hospitalized, um, not hospitalized with inability to resume normal activities. And then the blue is uh, our individuals who are hospitalized and needed supplemental oxygen. Um, so basically the green is the category where they don't have to have a lot of uh, complementary care. And you get into some of the darker categories where they are on high flow supplemental oxygen and low flow supplemental oxygen. But basically you see more green and less of the severe kind of category. So it starts to implement where they show it they go day by day. So they look at day zero, day four, day six, day eight. What they see is around a week of dosing, you start to see a dip. And that goes coincides with the amount of time, four to six days, you're starting to see that decrease. So uh, very, very fascinating. And Michelle, um, YouTube's really weird. That's a, one of those buzzwords they don't like and they will ding. So I'm trying to keep everything up to par uh, and why I'm not announcing it just like my H Bumblebee D product um, because YouTube's really weird. But this trial, this research, friends, and I'll, I'll make sure I post all of this when it gets wrapped up. This is a really big research piece. And um, I think that um, of any time right now where there are potential introductions to more functional medicine or natural medicine um, or complementary care, uh, therapeutics, the medical community is much more open to because right now we're seeing so many different potential delays in the rollout of vaccines um, and just getting our communities on board with masking and social distancing that we need, we need more resources. And this is where this particular research piece really looks at some very easy and inexpensive, you know, an inexpensive combination that might be beneficial for people to, um, to, to get. And you can easily get that online. You can get honey from your local store. Now, you know, there's, there are different forms of honey. I like raw honey. I like it natural. Uh, we have to be aware of, there's a really good, um, uh, on Netflix, there's a really good documentary where they spend a whole segment of this kind of uh, research on honey. And like there's a lot of Chinese uh, honey that is adulterated and fabricated and, and very toxic. But, but local honey and honey that, you know, the raw honey, honey with the comb in it, very, very beneficial. Um, so I want to highlight that. But the Nigella sativa, the NS, this colored seed oil. Um, it is very beneficial and particularly the thymoquinone, that is one of the compounds this seed oil contains, it can reduce inflammation. Now let's take this outside the context of COVID. If you have RA, this has been studied very effectively for RA. Um, if you are dealing with any type of uh, weakened immunity, if you are dealing with blood sugar imbalances, uh, systemic inflammation, digestive grievances, uh, thymoquinone can help your body modulate uh, the immune response. And so this is really broad-based uh, impact. And I think the fact that they're highlighting this in this HNS, it's called the HNS COVID PK trial. Um, it, it's, it's fascinating. And they've paired up two naturally occurring antivirals together that would not be so normally front and center with a general practitioner, but the fact that they've got this um, studied is very promising. So, um, you know, I, I am highly impressed is to, to kind of highlight where I'm at with that, the fact that Mass General, I, I'm not surprised, you know, I was part of um, that hospital network with Dana-Farber and we did a lot of a lot of integrative um, therapeutics with the Cancer Institute. Um, and I think that is very promising too, as we see this gain more uh, attention, that there are naturally occurring plants um, and properties that we can consume that might be as effective and more effective as we're seeing in this case than some uh, pharmaceuticals. Not always, but you know, anyway, now that we can pair up 
resources here, this is really critical. So this was really exciting. I don't know if you guys are excited, but <laughs> this stuff really jazzes me up when we have attention being placed on what I would consider a really true functional medicine perspective, utilizing food oriented uh, compounds that are naturally occurring, unadulterated by science and labs um, that can be very powerful. So yay, Brenda, I see Brenda's really excited. Um, and we've got Michelle, amazing herbs. Um, I'll have to check that out. Um, but yes, that is Felicia Butts Realtor. Yes, that is the compound that I'm referencing. Um, I say YouTube's really weird about that. It is actually in one of the things that is not allowed. So just FYI, um, which, you know, I'm hoping this video sustains itself, but you know, I always reference studies versus my own opinion, uh, especially in this category where uh, the SARS-CoV-2 research, the coronavirus COVID research is um, gaining momentum. We're seeing more and more studies happening. We're learning more about the virus. And you know that is information that I always wanna parlay and highlight to all of you because it is really critical that we uh, utilize the resources that we're learning about to help, help ourselves. Um, B H Bawana Muse. Um, so I answer all questions that are you know un you know non topic related on Fridays. But I will reference. Um, please join me tomorrow. I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live on Sovereign Labs uh, Laboratories. They're on Facebook. Check them out. Um, I will actually. If you look at my Instagram stories, so I had to swipe up. I've got links to that. Uh, webinar. It's tomorrow, Thursday, the 19th at 1.30 Eastern time, 11.30 a.m. Mountain time. Uh, we're going to be talking about stress, anxiety, all that stuff. So we'll get into that um, then. Um, the only other thing I did not mention this, but um, what is presenting itself that's going to be really interesting with these vaccines is uh, money, <laughs> funding, uh, federal oriented funding to help uh, employ staff to give, to distribute the uh, vaccine. But there's also transportation, like this Pfizer vaccine needs to be chilled at negative 70 degrees. And that, we don't know if we have enough chilling trucks, like there's just a lot of stuff that is going to need to get put in place if it hasn't already been. Pretty quickly, as soon as this gets out, we might see delays because of the transition nightmare that's happening where, you know, there's no info, inf legit information being shared with the new administration coming in, but also the financing. There's been uh, research now that shows um, half of the states are going to need additional funding. Um, some states have said they need like 140 million to roll this out. A total would be five and a half to six billion dollars to roll out just one of these vaccines. So with that, um, it, it, it is very complex. And so this is where this research really is great because if we see some of the uh, different methods minimizing that viral replication and it takes forever for us to get all the right things in place. And you know, it is not just having dry ice. It actually has to be stored in something that will maintain that temperature. And if it drops, if it if it goes above 70 degrees, meaning if it's not 70 degrees uh, below zero and it goes up to you know negative 68, that will only be active for one hour. So this is really, really critical. I see cupcake paper. Hey, cupcake paper, you're not using Facebook or Twitter. Oh no, yeah, there's a lot of hacking going on. Uh, Let's see, Tony says, I invested in Moderna, although I won't take, take it. <laughs> Stock is doing well. Yeah, all these stocks are doing well. Um, AstraZeneca uh, is another one that has, has been doing well. Um, I, th I, they, I think they all will. Um, okay, so uh, so Queen 2, I reference it. Um, they It was one milligram of honey and 80, 80 milligrams. Hold on. Oh, I got all sorted out. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. One, one milligram, one, sorry, one gram, not milligram, one gram of honey and 80 milligrams of the Natilla Sativa. Um, so that, and that was, that's the same dose for both the moderate and severe cases. Um, 
So this is, I, I love that. I'm very excited about this. You know, let's just hope that YouTube keeps this up. If they do, I might do an individual video on it. I've got to, I've got to just do a little bit more research. I actually have to contact my attorney on that one as well. Um, so, you know, such is life in this category. But I do want to reference, if you haven't done so, please download my pandemic wellness guide. It's free. Um, and especially, I can't say it now, but if you haven't signed up already for my full script account, so I, it, it is accessible now to any patient. Um, even if I don't see you, you can sign up for a patient account. It is HIPAA certified. So you do have to add in your name, your actual name, uh, and your email. And, uh, that gets you an account. If you haven't signed up, please do so because we have something really amazing coming out uh, in like a week and a half. So get in so you can get those emails um, and I'll announce it when I can, but you don't want to miss it. I promise. So, and that I have this guide is in a um, published protocol that lists out a lot of these things. So um, definitely check that out. And if you haven't done so, and you're interested in trying the C Bumblebee D therapy, my friends at Octagon Biolabs, I love them. They've got an awesome sale. Buy one, 30% off, buy two, 40% off, and buy three items, get 50% off. That mega savings. Stock up, stock up, stock up. <laughs> it's awesome. So there's a link down below as well. Um, and I'm so excited. I'm hoping by Friday, I'll have all my technical difficulties uh, worked out here. Our internet went down again at seven this morning, so I had to get that all whipped up in sh into shape. So it's just been it's just been a nightmare. But I am really excited to see all of you. I know many of you are uh, probably coming back home, um, so a lot of you are going to be watching me on the replay or joining me live. Um, I also will stay tuned today. I'm going to have an announcement about my appointment schedule. I've got some changes coming. I know a lot of you want to get on and get booked with me. So I'll have that. Watch out for those announcements on Instagram, in my Instagram stories, my Facebook page, and email. So uh, get, get, get access to that. And then I'll also post on the community tab um, on YouTube. So the community tab, if you're on YouTube, that's such a great way of me being able to communicate. And if you guys like um, me posting some of the deals and specials, there's just a lot. I'm, 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 I'm having talks and conversations and emails with a lot of my brands that I work with, and almost all of them have some sort of holiday savings. And so if you guys like that, I'm trying to compile all of that as fast as I can um, while also getting wrapped up our holiday gift guide. So stay tuned. Lots of good stuff coming your way. Um, the gift guide is going to share with you a new product that I've never featured. So it'll be featured for the first time on there. That's going to be awesome. And, oh, you want more Instagram dance? Yeah, Reels. Gabriel and I are having fun with Reels. Um, try, I, it's, it's fun. So we'll try and do a little dance or something sometime soon. Um, it's just so bizarre. For me, it just feels like it's on the verge of not professional. But it is, it's really fun. I love, we dance all the time in our family. Uh, so I'm trying to do things that, you know, people are not doing. Like everybody's doing, I see all these people doing the same thing. It's kind of boring um, and unoriginal. So stay tuned. <laughs> Lots of originality here. I'm grateful for all of you. Uh, comment on this video when it wraps. I really appreciate that. Hit the like button, share it. Um, and I'll post these. I, I just have a ton. I mean, literally all of this I printed off today to cover with you all today. So um, definitely check out the links down below, get in and set up your patient account in my full script store. It's automatically 10% off right now. Uh, but you want to get in to get some of the, um, special holiday related stuff, details, lots of good stuff. So, um, and tune in Friday, Friday will be our live Q and A and I'll call for questions, uh, tomorrow and, uh, join me on the Facebook page of my friends over at Sovereign Labs. They're the ones that do the cloth therapy and they actually have really amazing uh, vitamin C and some other immune supportive supplements so I'll see you guys there thanks everybody for tuning in and uh, I'm grateful and Pat and Ron thank you so much for always being such great moderators and I saw a look on here I saw I see Freddie and Tawana and Queen 2 and Shelby yay I see lots of familiar faces hey Anita um, 
cupcake paper. We've got Babu on, Jenny from the block and Darlene and Amber. Uh, I'm just so grateful. You guys have been tuning in, um, a lot of you since the beginning. So I'm grateful. Hey, Jay. Uh, Jay, I, I highlight the, it's one gram, honey, 80 milligrams of the NS. Um, and I'll post the link if you guys want to research this. This actually might be something if you have close relationships with natural practitioners or even your clinicians are a little bit more open, you know, I think it'd be important for them to see. To be honest with you, it's slowed down a little bit more recently in the amount of COVID related research. Um, but it's exciting that this has come out and Matt, all you have to do is just say Mass General was a part of it. Um, and it's a Harvard, Harvard Medical School related uh, research. That's, that's as high caliber as you can get here in the US. I see June um, and um, a whole bunch of other friends. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, so Cherie, the one, it's the C Bumblebee D. It's the one we're gonna see Melissa C and then space B space D. That's going to be the link. Um, oh, we've got Ruth. Hey Ruth in Northern Ireland, love it. Oh my gosh, I'm jonesing out on the crown. I don't know if you guys have watched that. I love, I love British history. I love monarchy, like the history of monarchs. It's like the one thing that I, I am not so over. Um, and actually I haven't ever traveled other than in London. So that's one of the things on my like bucket list. But if you haven't watched The Crown, this season's really, really good. Um, so I've been watching that in the evenings. A little too late, I've been staying up too late. But Pr Princess Die is on there. And the actress is amazing. So if you guys like that, I think you'll love that. And uh, thanks, Shelby. Um, and everybody, have a great day. Stay safe. Stay warm. And um, definitely do communicate with your friends and family to be safe. And uh, this is, you know, virtual holidays, I think, this year. Hoping that we'll get back to normal next year. All right, friends, have a great day. I will see you 